What's going on, you guys? It's your Huggable Hipster here, and welcome back to Colonel Sanders. <laughs> guys, I'm actually playing a game again on YouTube. Wow, you know, I honestly did not see the day. I didn't see it. I didn't see it coming again, honestly. But we're continuing right where we left off at the second episode. I do have a playlist for this game, so all the episodes for this series will be in said playlist. So uh, let's move on and see if Colonel Sanders is going to be Bay. Find Colonel Sanders outside the quad where all the cool kids are. Sometimes I'd like to come outside and look at the school buildings and think about how cringeworthy this game is, honestly. <laughs> Sounds like you have big plans. Alone together for the first time, you figure now is the perfect moment to show your personality to him. N uh, neg him? Neg? What's a neg him? To show your own strength? What is a neg? Wow him with a big idea to add additional ingredients to really spice things up. Be modest and thoughtful. Um, you know, about that, I was thinking about your secret recipe. I don't doubt it. It has a way of leaving an impression on all those who taste it. Okay, cocky much? We decided to show him that you know a thing or two about blowing minds with new flavors. I actually had some thoughts on how you could improve it. Improve it? You want to change Matt's secret recipe, and you think you can do better. Have you ever heard of habanero peppers? I tend an entire garden of chili pepper variety. variety. Habanero pepinado cayenne, and that's not the point. You can't just toss new ingredients into my secret recipe and expect to improve it. The recipe is about balance and involves careful consideration and refinement. I didn't mean to let this be the last time you improvise my recipes. Huggable. You better head back inside, but you wait at a moment so that Colonel Sanders doesn't think you're desperately chasing after him. You step into the massive cooking arena where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven and all tools and ingredients they need. Ooh. Oh, I forgot about Miriam. Oh, look at that little, little bundle of sunshine with green hair. We get to show our stuff. Our stuff meaning our utensils. Get your mind out of the gutter, kids. I'm not going to blow anything except maybe kisses to the crowds of fans you're going to earn with your signature adorable tiny food creation. So that's a friend. Yes. Yes, that's that's a friend. That is a friend. Today's lesson we will be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off. Actually, Miriam looks over at you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. <laughs> you pounce? What is this pouncing bullshit? Hey, Colonel, would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? A team of two, that is me and you, if I wasn't clear. <laughs> Sure, Huggable. I'll prepare our station. Aw, after you almost gave him an idea that almost corrupted the chicken, that almost corrupted everything. Now you as a partner, Miriam left standing alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Hello, new partner. Mr. Bob, Mr. Beep Boop person. Well, not person, but still. Oh my, two potential partners. I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose. Oh, now she's got the machines and the boys after her green hair. Looks like you'll have to pick for her. Friends' duties can be a little awkward, but that's the price you pay for not being alone forever. Damn straight. Who do you want to ask to be Miriam's partner? Um, my gut feeling is on Clank. We're gonna go with Clank. Sorry, Pop, but I think Miriam will be partnering with Clank today. I mean, he's a machine. He knows all, you know, it's kind of like, you know, that artificial intelligence thing he's got going on. Sir. Clank is clearly excited to have some attention. He heats up and begins to roll back and forth. Hold on there, fella. We don't even know what the assignment is yet. Technically, Clank might not have a face, but there is something charming and earnest about him. Yeah, it's all those knobs. Clank judders and panel shakes loose. You get the impression that this is a sign of affection. Yeah, because whenever I'm affectionate about someone, all of my panels just shake loose. All right, you two, for today- I don't know what that voice was I gave to Sprinkles. <laughs> all right, you two, for today's lesson, we are going to keep it simple. Pick a basic dish and divide up the steps. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea. Dish, do you suggest to your partner, Colonel Sanders? Steak tartare. <laughs> I don't know why it's always so fun to say that. Stay tatar! <laughs> you don't even need to cook it. Using octopus will blow Colonel Sanders' mind. Your grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy. Ooh. Octopus. Since I can't eat it, I'm going to vicariously live through the game. I'm more of a down-home type of chef myself. What about something that go with me here? Walks on land? Okay. Actually, there is a certain species of octopus that do leave the water. For instance, have you heard of Abidus Exciliatus? Sounds like a Harry Potter spell. Oh, look, it's Bon Bon! <laughs> octopus. Crab. Sounds like you're describing one of my signature dishes. Are you trying to steal my thunder? 
Boys, 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 what with all the hostility? Has the competition been moved up to today? Dare you try to muscle in on my culinary tech 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 You could cut the tension here with a chef's knife, but which makes sense because the chef's knives are usually pretty sharp. You begin to peel and boil potatoes as you try to extradite yourself from this thorny situation, but your new rivals aren't having it. I doubt that you even have the capabilities to work with ingredients so delicate. You should probably stick to microwavable dishes. Like my friend Vanan. <laughs> <laughs> Though he may be in the mod <laughs> I can't take this game seriously. Well, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this thing that has positioned herself in your station. Nothing about this makes any sense, but one thing is clear. She is coming for Colonel if you don't watch out. You're suggesting that the secret to my special software sauce with this novice? I'm disappointed in all of you. <laughs> this girl's friend in need, Radar, is second to none. She immediately comes running over. Is somebody threatening my friend? I will destroy them. Look down at the station and realize that in tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking autopilot. Oh, all right. Well, that's when you know you got a true chef. Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed and boiled the potatoes in perfectly creamy mashed texture with plenty of butter and cream for flavor. It's as if your natural passion guided you through the steps you know so well while your attention was elsewhere. Colonel Sanders extends his hand, holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat out of which he pours smooth brown gravy, smoothing your nearly finished potato dish. Oh, and that's the mashed potatoes and gravy, which is the KFC. Okay, I've actually never had that KFC before. I don't know if it's good or not. Colin or Sanders holds up a spork to you. A spork? Really? This requires a gold fork from Gucci. And grab hold of it, but he doesn't immediately let go. The two of you stand holding the same spork, and for that small moment, all of the madness and pressure into this crazy world stops. Yes, but because sporks equal love. It's both a spoon and a fork. It's a quality in a kitchen utensil. It's lock. The moment is electric. Or it's gravy because it flows like a river. Together, you dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping spork fool up. A spork full. There comes the metal music again. And then filled with rage and without thinking, you fling the spork full of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid, beautiful face. Aww. Scooping up a fingerful, Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by the revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Probably not, but those abs have enough integrity for the rest of us. Potatoes with gravy? Pathetic. In just a few minutes, I've prepared a full meal. Gaze upon my spectacular raised tentacle of octopus and silky salt water sauce. Okay. Plated on a battle axe. <laughs> Forged in my supreme chef ancestors. <laughs> the interrupting student rushes at Van Van and swipes a bite of a signature dish right off the plate. Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed. It might have turned in the process. The results could be toxic. Oh. Oh, too late. It's been eaten. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, well, hey, you know what? At least it's not the Sims that didn't set something on fire, so that's good. Back at the plate, the rest of it is gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being slurped in po- Oh, no. The class bell rings, disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back to reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, the obvious danger, has inoculated him against poisons of all kinds. Okay. I'm not sure. The professors here make enough money. <laughs> <laughs> Colonel Sanders stands in the quad's neon glow and speaks softly. Those mashed potatoes are classy, right? Before you go on, I want you to know they're not a great representation of the skills. I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing tasting them. Reminded me why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him in a way that you find inspiring. Now might be the perfect time to tell him you're developing feelings for him. Oh. Colonel Sanders. Yes. How come Mike is over here. That's why I'm whispering to it. Shut up. Don't judge him. There's something I need to tell you. Oh, crap. Your chef blocked me. <laughs> There's something I need to tell you for- Oh, crap. What's gonna happen? Oh, gee. Yeah. Oh, geez is right. You see, when I was just a boy, I had a dream that one day I would be the greatest chef the world has ever seen. And every day since then, I've been working towards my dream day and night. Never stopping, never resting. Also, lifting a lot of weights. Like, so many weights. Somewhere in the distance, you hear a long, sad sigh. Oh, Forget him. We're talking about me. What in the hell is that? Is it time for a boss battle? I didn't know this game had boss battles. The spork monster is here to fight a hero. I, uh, 
I think I left the fridge door open. Later, nerds. We will not let harm come to another student except for the ghost kid. I kind of dropped the ball on that. <laughs> be afraid. Be very afraid of me because I'm a monster, see? Made of sporks. But before you can discuss a syntax any further, <laughs> it's a turn-based fight sequence. Oh. What will you do? Um, oh my god, this just turned into Mortal Kombat real quick. Okay, um, attack. You decide to go on the attack. Which attack will you use? Um, cook with <laughs> Cook with love does one damage. Okay, I just got real. The attack really upset Spork Monster. At this point, I don't know what to think of this. Okay, you take one damage. Cool. Uh, defend. You decide to defend. Which defense will you use? Trepidation. You continue to stay back and endure whatever comes your way. Seems like a pretty weird strategy, but okay, sure. You do you. <laughs> the, ga the game literally just said, you do you. Spork Monster focuses their mashed mind and draws energy from the Mother Earth itself. What the hell is this game? You decide to go on the attack. Which attack will you use? Cook with love. Okay. I wonder who's gonna have to clean this up. I like cheese, I'll clean it up. Feeling vulnerable, Swork Monster prepares for the ultimate attack, Rounded Edge. Vile villain, your reign of terror stops here. Oh boy. Colin Sanders summons the energy of a thousand chickens. Okay. Pot pie power pinch. Yeah, let's continue on. It does 10 damage. Ooh, okay. Alright, I knew pot pies were healthy for you. Spork Monster is defeated. You saved me. An injured Spork Monster spews steam into the night. Forget Mercy, finish him. Spare the wretched beast, finish him. I mean, they're clearly getting this from Mortal Kombat. Oh my god. No student will ever walk the quad in fear again. The monster messed with the wrong chef. You're ready, your final attack, and it's going to be... Oh, stop. <laughs> Oh my god, I love that so much. It does 10 damage. Oh my god. Spork monster is completely vaporized. Colonel Sanders looks on in awe. Student death does a lot of damage. I mean, you know, damn, they ain't wrong about that. The defeated monster left behind a special item. Oh god, please tell me it's a spork. It appears to be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection, it's so much more. It's a book of magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover. Oh, good lord. You open the cover and find a library of cards, uh, a library card tucked inside. The last name to have signed it is Borgo? Borgo? I don't know why I'd stay with that accent. Borgo. Okay. Wait, is it like Borgo? Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final attack had left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. Without the energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. He must have helped you get home in your tired state. You don't know if you could have made it home without the guy. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel the like covers being pulled up over you as you're tucked in lightly. Aww. With a chicken poster and a BTS poster. Lovely. In your dream, you're together with Colonel Sanders. For some reason, Sprinkles is also there, instructing your love. Dreams are weird. <laughs> you awake on a day to attempt to process the wild vision you had. Were they memories or premonitions? And then there was a secret ingredient that Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? But guys, I think this is going to be it for today's episode of Colonel... 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 Colonel of Colonel Sanders. I can never say that name right. But thank you guys so much for the support and the love on the video from last night. Honestly, I, I did not, I, I didn't really think I was going to come back to gaming on YouTube, but I'm glad I did. I really honestly, I missed it. Even though I was gone for like, what, a month? <laughs> I think at most for, for the gaming, I just, I really need to come back to it. But yeah, there's going to be a lot that's changing with some of the games. I'm going to make them a little more intense, a little more just well, you'll see. But if you guys like my face and what I do, please be sure to subscribe and hit that bell down below because I make videos every Monday, Wednesday, and double uploads on Friday. Stay casual and nerdy, you guys, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace. <laughs>
손을 받을리는 빛방울들이 땅에 떨어지는 소리 전해지는 점 생각